Well, hi guys, welcome back to a new Fishing for Memories video. Now, if you do enjoy the videos, do take time to give them a thumbs up, perhaps share them on your social media pages. And if you've got any queries or any questions, or just feel like you want to make a comment, please don't hesitate. Drop a comment in the comment box below. That does two things. It lets me know of any constructive criticism, any queries you might have, and it also does help the video from a smaller channel like myself to be seen a lot more on YouTube because you're always fighting the YouTube algorithm being a smaller channel even more so anyway so what are we doing this fine very crack of dawn morning well I can tell you now I've got tench fizzing out around about 25 foot out maybe 25 to 30 foot out if that and they are doing the proverbial jacuzzi really fizzing so Apologies to anyone who's finding the tench videos maybe a bit boring, but I am back out tench fishing on that particular water where you saw me have that lovely nine pound tench on my last video and those others. So, setup same as last time. Very compact setup, you can see that. That's a Shimano STC, that's Shimano Telescope, teles uh, Shimano Travel Concept even, Telespin. Very compact, breaks down almost like a snooker or pool cue would. So the butt unscrews and slides in. I'll just show you how that's done. Simple as that. Locks in place. Locks, locks in. You've got your butt section done. Very compact setup. This is 2.7 meters in length when set up. Little Akuma Avenger, absolutely tiny 500 size bait runner style reel or bait feeder reel. Now that's loaded with Shimano Technium mainline. Running down from there is a low resistance leisure setup with a nice bit of uh, 10 pound sink braid little liner liner and right on the back there if you can see that is a micro maggot clip now you can use them for maggots who would have thought that as the name suggests but i'm using them primarily for red worms now i'm putting three or four red worms on the maggot clip and air injecting them so they just lift off the weed bed and sit nicely almost critically balanced ground bait wise got some nice balls of my last ground bait that that is the mainline match coarse margin mix and i've got in with that nice bit of a, a dutch company called vivani i think it's vivani baits i've bought quite a lot of their milled hemp real crushed up powdery powdered hemp and so there's a mixture of the mainline margin mix which is margin coarse ground bait which is a um, mainline match in with that i've got uh the milled hemp i've got some power particle hemp and a little, very small inclusion of corn. Well, I've got that absolutely soaked in molasses. Real sweet, really sugary, really entices the fish. And it's a classic to use for tench. Really is a good drawer and a good appetite stimulant. So that's as simple as it gets. A few balls of ground bait, a few catapult falls of maggot topping the swim up every so often. And just fishing that one rod with air injected red worms. Do excuse my impatience, guys. I really want to get a rod out. So I'm going to spray some maggots out. I'm going to use a PVA mesh bag. I'm not going to put any balls of ground bait in just yet. See if we can pick one of these fish up without putting any ground bait in and then start to add some ground bait to the swim. But it's a gorgeous morning. Let's have a little look at the lake behind me. Now isn't that isn't isn't that gorgeous? What a fine morning. What a fine morning indeed. Anyway, let's get the rod set up. Let's get some pouch rolls of maggot out there and put some bait in.
That was a good take. Luckily, this one's got a hood of weed at the moment. Well, very nice to <sighs> struck that and I didn't manage to lock the bait runner too easily. <laughs> I did let a little bit of line out as I lifted into the fish as it tore. That's another nice tension. Lovely Nick. Once again, just taking on the maggot clip with three air injected red worms. Little mesh bag of the main line. Spod and PVA pellets, and yeah, a little helping of ground bait. My last ground bait out there as well. We have a little bit of crushed hemp and whole hemp. Ooh, long fish, really, really thick set, really stout. Nice, nice weight about it as well. Anyway, let's get this rather rotund tinker slip back, shall we? Wonderful. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this, this is the uh, mainline match margin mix ground bait. That's a mixture of crushed pellets and um, there's crushed hemp in that as well. I've also put some hemp seed in there. Very light amount of sweet corn. I never like my fish to get too preoccupied on corn. Uh, I always find on some waters that corn can be a bit of a warning signal and can spook fish off of a swim if they're used to being hammered and pressured with corn. Now, in with that, I've mixed liquid molasses, which you can buy from any of your animal feed stores. You can get it on Amazon. That's where I get mine from. It's Lincoln, the one I use, and um, comes in a four or five litre bottle for around about £12. That's a real nice sugary flavour. Gives a nice dark colour to the ground bait, but it releases a real syrupy, sugary aroma that really does work wonders for most species of fish, especially tench, though. And, um, yeah. I make these up into big balls when I bring them then I bring them down and just break them down to whatever size I fancy which won't necessarily disturb the fish too much so as you can see at the moment I'm using like a little golf ball sizes but I'm just dotting around the general area
sticky mittens and I didn't bring a cloth with me. <laughs> Mum's going to love me when she gets sees the trousers when I get home. Mark, what is it? Have you pooped yourself again? <laughs> really nice at the moment though it's clouding up got that breeze that's still pushing in here causing a bit of a pain as I said earlier with the debris on the surface but yeah it's looking good for maybe another fish In absolutely pristine condition this one fighting fit doesn't really want to be held for the camera to be honest it's a it's a feisty feisty lady <laughs> but yeah very very happy it's been a decent trip but the last two fish the old crud has been collecting in this area of the lake really has collected and blown over it's um, been a nightmare getting a decent line lay don't like my line coming off the bottom too tight so Trying to get it beneath the crud, it's not been easy. But yeah, happy days. It's a gorgeous looking tinker, look at that for a paintbrush paddle, eh? Lovely, lovely build, lovely olive green tones and buttercups. And of course, a lovely set of teddy bear eyes. <laughs> Let's get this lovely fish slip back. Who knows, maybe there'll be one or two more. Just going a toilet again. Getting a bad habit of this, isn't it? Go to toilet and get a bite. <laughs> this one's running to the weed. A bit of weed on it. Typical. It seems to be late there. I'll go to toilet and get bite. Not moaning, believe me, I'm certainly not moaning. Well there we go guys, not quite as big as the others and tore off just as I was going to go and relieve myself. Luckily I hadn't started going a pee. I was getting a habit of fishing here, and getting the urge to go a wee and then getting your rod tear off. But this one put up a sterling scrap, £5.7 ounces. Really, really feisty. Nice to add another tench to the fishing trip. It's been really, really spellbinding and wonderful trip so far. And um, yeah, I can't moan. Not the largest of the lot, but certainly one of the most feistiest bites. And knew when to pick its time wisely when Mark had to vacate his swim to take a take a slash. <laughs> Draw myself back. There you go. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get this a little olive green gem slip back.
was a nice one guys I was just standing off camera just putting a little bit of food down out of the shot to a couple of robins that were fighting each other so I put some food to the one out of shot this side and then went out of shot and fed the other one because they're so territorial as soon as I'm doing that the rods melted off I think that'll be the last one of the trip I can head off home rather rather a happy chappy See what guys that is a lump it's a good fish it's a very good fish a very very good fish well feast your eyes on that guys what a fish second largest ever tench venue best for this particular water for me nine pounds ten ounces should imagine early spring should be way over way over double figures but it's been a fabulous trip and this has just sealed the deal what a beautiful fish absolutely overjoyed over flipping joyed what a corker let me draw myself back a bit give some better proportion look at that what a thick thick stout solid fish and I'll tell you what the rod did melt off while I was just off camera feeding a robin ah <laughs> uh, what a perfect day. What a way to seal a perfect trip. Let's get this beauty slip back. As I say, my second largest ever tench. And a venue best. She's been very good for the camera. So let's say goodbye and slip her back for someone else to ho hopefully make their day one day. <laughs> well, what a bloody surreal trip absolutely nuts uh, I am over the moon I'm kind of like kind of like here but not all here kind of surreal kind of weird floaty feeling that you only get when you have a really good trip but um yeah it's been a, been one hell of a good trip eh? plenty of tench some quality quality tench topped off by that absolute gorgeous nine pound ten tinker wow but yeah that fish just picked up the bait as I was as I said earlier as I was feeding a robin next to well literally just out of shot around this tree that's just here behind me and um, yeah wow but it's been a thoroughly enjoyable trip the conditions did help they changed from those more settled conditions and blew in a bit of a nice south westerly pushing into my bank always helps on the, any lakes no matter the size if you can get the wind pushing into you and even better a south westerly yeah, you were in with a chance of catching a few fish and yeah catch a few fish we did didn't we oh, so amazing so such an absolute and each one of those they've all got their own characters they've all got their own battle, battle scars they're different hues of yellows and greens and limey colors and of course as i said already uh, the various marks that they've picked up during their lifetime and they've lived and soldiered on even the irises on, on each of the fish, some of them are more bright or orange, others are more red. And um, it's such a nice variation, also a variation in the bites. Did lose one fish to a hook pull, but hey ho, that's the way it goes. The funny thing for was, before I had this 910, I thought to myself, you know what, it's probably worth a recast, because I think it was a little bit off with your cast. And I recast, got back on where I felt, you know, on the money. And um, yeah, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, yeah, my second largest tench and my largest from this venue so venue best for this venue um, and another nine in a short matter of trips what what is going on honestly guys but yeah you can't beat what I was doing what I've been doing is using air injected red worms on a maggot clip simple running leisure low resistance setup keeping it simple giving the fish naturals which they love if you're fishing a water that's rich in naturals and you haven't got too many perch or rud causing you a menace at the time i always go with naturals and that includes nighttime fishing for tench i'm happy to use naturals at night anyone that says that naturals don't work forgive me for saying this anyone that says that naturals don't work for tench at night they that, that 
it's, it's really not the one. Don't that, that's not the case at all. Naturals, you look at a worm, you look at the amino acid compound, you look at that leak off, you look at the level of protein it's got. It's it's an original classic high protein bait. So why wouldn't it work at night? I've used worms at night for chub fishing for barbel, work fine. Why wouldn't they work for tench at night? So believe me, guys, it's um nice and simple setup, low resistance running measure setup little kicker on the hook little tungsten bead you can use a little piece of little split shot or gravel gravel colored split shot if you want to match it up um, to the bottom or you can use a tungsten sinker like I was using a little um, kicker on the hook back of the hook there at the bottom the smallest maggot clip you can get and then air injecting just lightly because obviously they're red worms so you haven't got to put a lot of air into them injecting very lightly in the ends of each red worm um, sometimes doing all three of them, sometimes just doing two and using one to counterbalance the ones that are going to lift off. Now that presents itself very very well on a weed bed. Even though I have raked the swim, I know that I'm never going to get it 100% clear and I would rather that it nestles lightly on top, which it will do because you're air injecting the worms, which gives them a little bit of critical balance. Plus you can air inject them a bit more and you can give them more lift. But it doesn't need to stop there, you can air inject your maggots as well. You know. And, and those little things, those little things just give you the little edges that get, put fish on the bank. And I fully believe when the, the way tench feed and the way they kind of nibble about, shall we say, very dainty, and the way they feed in general, they always tend to have a habit of covering your actual hook bait. So presenting it a bit more well balanced or even lifting it so it's lighter on the weed beds if you are still, you know, landing your bait on a weed bed and you're not 100% sure or if you know that you've raked a spot like I have but you know there's going to be weed about but you just want that added nice attraction that added visuality that you'll get because it's not fully sunk down and it's just wa wafting about or if you inject it a little bit less you can just critically balance it so yeah just simple simple ideas simple methods simple low resistance running rigs I really not one for really going that short with my tent rigs Gotta be honest, I do have a difficulty to, sh to actually tie a very, very, very short tent rig. So I don't go that short with them. What I try to do is make sure if I am fishing a running rig, I'm fishing it in a reasonably clear area. If I've, you know, I might have led it about prior to feel around to see it's clear, but nine times out of ten, I will have definitely raked a spot. But that's it, guys. It's been enjoyable. I hope I haven't bored you with all these um, tent videos that I'm putting out. Um, I've been really enjoying fishing for them, and um, as you can probably tell, very impassioned species for me i absolutely adore them anyway thank you for watching if you've got any comments drop them down below i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible or just uh follow me on instagram at fishing for memories and um i'm always readily available on there to answer any questions that you might have give any advice that i can possibly give and um yeah always good to hear from you guys anyway still got my rucksack to shut and i'm going to get on my e-bike and I'm going to make my way home. But I'm going to make my way home one hell of a happy guy. Cheers for watching, guys. Till my next video, take care and tight lines to all of you.